welcome everyone to data.live playbook leadership podcast and today we have uh, with us michael o'connell from tipco software he's a chief analytics officer and a brief introduction that uh, i have captured so he is a uh, chief analytics officer there and in um, and last in last past 20 years he has been uh, doing some fun math stats software stuff uh, in the industry um, and he holds a phd from north carolina state university and um, he has about 50 plus uh, papers that he has published and numerous uh, stats and mathematical models uh, in software uh, has been contributed by him so welcome michael uh, to the data dot life playbook pod- leadership podcast hi vishal how are you doing good i'm so uh, as a as a starting point um, so why don't sort of we discuss what you do in tipco software what tipco software does for our audience and uh, yeah let's start from there okay yeah so we have a big investment in analytics uh, our spotfire product is a visual analytics platform uh, and it includes um, our tipco uh, runtime for r which is a, a commercial rewrite of the r engine um, at scale uh, embedded inside of our spotfire product Uh, it's also embedded inside of other Tipco products, our inv- our event uh, processing platform, um, such as stream-based and business events. Uh, we also have a uh, quite uh, sophisticated and simple to use uh, geoanalytics capability, um, geocoding, reverse geocoding, um, and that uh, drives the map mapping capabilities inside of Spotfire. Uh, we also had acquired a company, uh, Extended Results, that has a uh, a uh, KPI dashboarding uh, capability that's uh, embedded inside of Spotfire uh, and then finally a couple of years ago we acquired Jaspersoft which is a embedded um, pixel perfect uh, reporting uh, capability so that uh, th- those those products um, and and components uh, comprise our analytics offering at Tipco okay so uh, thank you by the way for sharing that um so what does so what is a chief analytics officer as per tipco like uh, for tipco what's your day to day role and what do you do there if i may ask oh sure yeah so chief analytics officer is a position um it's a kind of a trending position um gartner has defined it as an offensive position <laughs> where you're trying to turn insights into um value and revenue uh, as opposed to say a chief data officer which is more of a defensive position where you're kind of managing uh, risk um so that uh holds true for for me in my position i um i have a lot of customer facing uh component to my to my job uh but i'm also feeding the what i'm learning from customers back into our products so it's a uh, it's a bit of both it's a bit of a bridge between what we see in the customer and what we drive in our products and then finally uh i run the data science team at tipco which uh that team is uh, very fluent in uh, all of those products i mentioned uh and is able to create really cool stuff with those and ex- push those products to the boundaries and uh you know create applications and uh, solve business problems using the the tipco analytics uh, product stack interesting uh definitely very interesting so one thing that I, when i was looking uh, looking at your profile so i i observed one thing so you were chief data scientist with tipco and 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 recently you've been promoted to chief analytics officer so i think this is we see these words a lot so we see chief analytics officer chief data officer chief data scientist so what is the difference between uh, these three uh, if i can have your some perspective on that yeah so i mean i just sort of talked about the different difference between uh, yeah. analytics officer and data officers offensive versus defensive you know data science is um uh is is mainly around uh, on on the analytics side not so much on the uh on the defensive side of things it's an offensive position as well um but data science is a blend of uh, wrestling data from a variety of sources um into uh some visual way of of looking at those data so the spotfire product has you know connectors to just a bunch of different data sources uh and those data sources are, are pro- proliferating so that team is busy um keeping up with all the different data sources uh but i guess the first leg of the data science stool is um is wrestling with data uh and then secondly uh being able to visualize and analyze those data in a fluent way uh we talk about inline data discovery so that you're constantly uh uh 
molding and shaping the data uh, as you're analyzing it. We don't. We think data preparation is an oxymoron. We don't think you prepare data before. We think you're constantly working with the data while you're uh, analyzing. And so our uh, our philosophy on on data and uh, uh, preparation is really it's in line. It's immersive. Uh, it's iterative, and you're always uh, you know working with the data as you're doing uh, the analysis. A big component of data science, a day in the life of a data scientist, is constructing a feature. Now, people always sort of equate um, uh, or or getting to a signal. People always think that you know the the data science is involved with algorithms and math and stuff like that. That's a very small part of it. I mean, it's an important part, uh, but you know, getting the data the uh, into a shape and form where the 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 columns uh, um, represent. Uh, information rather than just raw noise. You know, extracting the signal from the noise is a big part of it. Uh, before you ever get to fitting a model, you have to have a get the data into a form there where it uh, represents the information, um, you know, efficiently. Uh, and then uh, you know the the third and most important uh, leg of the data science stool is um, understanding a business problem and really focusing on solving that, and everything else serves that. Uh, you know the data that you prepare, the visuals you prepare, the analysis. It's all um, rallies around and is subservient to the business problem, which uh, you know is of paramount importance. So those are the three legs of the stool: um, getting onto the right business problem and really focusing on that, you know, marshalling all the data that are uh, relevant to that, um, uh, and then analyzing those data, especially getting to the features, uh, the, the the signals. And then uh, modeling that and getting that those models and rules ready for uh, deployment into a, a real-time system. Interesting. De definitely, uh, very good insights there. So uh, one thing that again, I, when I was looking at your profile, I observed that uh, you had a very extensive experience in multiple industries. So you have touched retail, you have done financial services, and a lot of those those verticals. So what do you see um, is the adoption of uh, data analytics capabilities or like these big data and so as uh, these capabilities uh, in these industries, which one is lagging, which one is leading and so what's the opportunity here that you are seeing from, from, from your, your perspective? Yeah, it seems like there's a pretty massive um, migration of capabilities from Wall Street to Main Street over the, over the last years. Um, you know, as you know, uh, Trading data and, and data on Wall Street, when Wall Street's been data driven for decades, uh, but in you know in recent times, uh, that type of thing has pushed its way out into lots of other industries. Uh, in the life sciences, um, you know, data has been paramount of importance uh, because the whole approval process of getting drugs to market has been data driven for also for for a long time. Uh, and then in terms of the energy industry, uh, we've seen uh, that industry dominated by data. Uh, you know, geology data and uh, just understanding how to get um, where to where to make your bets around drilling and, and how to get uh, uh, the product to market has been a, a very data driven enterprise. Uh, so those three areas have been you know strong in in data for a long time. Uh, but then in you know recent uh, years we've seen uh, those sorts of uh, techniques um, you know push their way out into consumer. Uh, applications, retail, consumer goods, um, you know, as the telco industry has boomed, uh, you know, as the whole of the population has come online, we've seen uh, those methods of, of data wrestling and wrangling and, and analytics that have been applied to those historically uh, data intensive industries. So those methods have started to be applied across the board uh, as we've gotten, you know, so much data online and so many people online, uh, we're seeing a uh, Consumer level data, consumer level data, uh, as as being a big data uh, opportunity as well. Interesting, uh, uh, definitely interesting. So now let's uh, go over a Tipco a bit. So Tipco is into. So there were like a lot of BI players uh, in the market, and since these sort of these uh, advanced capabilities as they are emerging in to now tackle more data and and all the BI tools. So they have like fabulous experience uh, in sort of visualizing uh, these data for the businesses. They used to be one of the like pioneers in that. So how is the BI industry coping up uh, with with sort of these latest trends and, and, and sort of capabilities that are emerging to now now do like a lot of real time analytics and real time visualization and, and, and all that. So what 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 are you seeing from that perspective? 
Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a move towards uh, you know predictive and prescriptive analytics to go with visual analytics. Uh, and like you say, the market is crowded for visual analytics. It's becoming a commodity to be able to just you know draw a graph. Uh, you know, Google and Microsoft have very almost free offerings for doing just basic uh, graphics and so on. So I mean, we really the industry is really moving towards um, you know more artificial intelligence and more smart stuff. Uh, where the user can be guided and prompted and recommended, you know how to analyze their data. Uh, so we, you know, a couple of years ago, launched our recommendations engine inside of Spotify. That you know, once you point Spotify at data, it introspects the data, it brings the data in, and then it starts suggesting what sort of graphs uh, you might want to draw. So it gives you a bunch of suggestions. It does uh, when it reads the data. It uh, does metadata typing, so it understands if this is a time column or a space or a number or a category or a text or whatever the data are. Uh, and it'll, uh, after it uh, does that metadata typing, it'll start suggesting appropriate graphs. So if it sees, a, it sees you're interested in uh, putting a, a time column into your analysis, it'll automatically create the time hi hierarchy. It'll suggest graphs with that time hierarchy on the x axis. It'll put the other variables that you're interested in on the y-axis, it'll draw those graphs on your actual data and give you a, uh, a palette of thumbnails of all of the interesting um, potential signals in your data. So that as the analyst, you then say, oh, I just want this, this, and this, and then it automatically creates a brush link dashboard for you to immersively analyze your data. Interesting, interesting. So uh, let me again dig into your background. So uh, you, ha you are a statistician by trade. So what, do you, right, yeah. so what do you think uh, is the future of stats uh, with all these sort of uh, these when uh, the computers are getting more sophisticated? Actually, I was talking to one of the statisticians and said, uh, probably I'll be the last guy, last statistician living because they will go away. So what's, what's your perspective on that? Uh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think statisticians are going to go away. I think they're <laughs> in high demand. Uh, but you know, the, the thing that's changed a lot is that you know, statisticians can't just be you know, ivory tower academicians with uh, you know, figuring out some new algorithm that has a you know, modest improvement over something else or whatever. It's, it's become a lot less academic. It's become more around the, the big opportunity that statisticians missed out on was uh, the data wrestling and data wrangling and being able to kind of prepare the data for the analysis. Uh, and so that combination of data wrestling uh, with um, with stats, uh, you know, along with the, the the business problem focus, that's what's created data science, and that's why that's it's uh, become so so popular. Uh, you know, historically, statisticians would work on, you know, just these kind of classic example data sets and spend all their time focused on efficient algorithms and stuff like that. As the world of data has exploded, there's been a need for really wrestling that data and combining it with those. Um, you know algorithms, and and also with the visual immersive experience. Uh, that's uh, those all all those things have sort of come together. Uh, but there's lots of lots of opportunities for uh, for statisticians uh, to to participate in that in that world. Interesting. Uh, and you know we see an explosion. Um, you know just talking about statisticians for a minute, the explosion in the R community and the Python community for uh, you know working with those data from an analytic type um, programming perspective. I mean, the R uh, community, the, the R user conference is in Santa Clara next week, actually, um, the annual user conference, use R. Uh, and, you know, it's oversold, where you, people can't get into it. Um, you know, there's, there's more than 6,000 uh, user contributed R packages now. Uh, oh. Interesting. So, long winded answer, but, uh, you know, statisticians uh, and the R community are flourishing and they're in high demand. <laughs> but, you know, it's now a combination of, of algorithms with data. Uh, managing data, wrestling data, you know, sourcing data, and then visually exploring it along with, um, along with algorithmically exploring it. Interesting. No, I think definitely. Uh, I totally agree with you on that. On that, uh, uh, that uh, they still have a massive role to play, and they actually they are, they are bringing the science and the spine of of how to handle data. So um, another thing that I'm seeing as an opportunity. So uh, I'm dis I'm sort of hearing a lot about central data office. So pretty much putting up something like center of excellence for because now companies can sort of handle data, they can sort of store it somewhere. Now there's a, there's also a growing need of central data office or something. So do you hear that as well on on your conversation? And what do you think about that? Um, and do you have a perspective there as well? 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, management um, and collaboration across an organization, uh, management of data and collaboration is a big deal. Uh, and collaboration around the artifacts of the data analysis. So we've had this, uh, you know, the way we look at that, we've got a, a thing called the Spotfire library, which uh, when you have credentials to use Spotfire, you log into the library, and that's where you manage and share all of your artifacts. And when you point Spotfire at a data source, it introspects the data, it gives you the tables that you can pick which columns from which tables or whatever you want to bring into the, into the product. Uh, <clears throat> that, you know, you create an information link through that point and click operation. <coughs> Pardon me. That information link can be saved into the library and reused by anybody else who has credentials to the library. So this library becomes a, a uh, you know, a repository of everybody's work uh, mm -hmm. that uh, allows for reuse, collaboration. Uh, you can search across the library when you have a conversation uh, on an analysis or create a storyline on a, on a Spotfire analysis. Those can be searched and managed through the library as well. So, you know, to your point, this repository for the analytics group in the organization uh, becomes a very important uh, repository for, uh, for managing best practices, for collaborating around the team, the center of excellence, as you talked about, becomes uh, manifest in that, uh, you know, in that library. Uh, so that's our take on it, and we think it's hugely important that um, uh, an organization uh, collaborates and, and manages their uh, analytics assets. We've had some of our uh, leading edge customers are using that library to create an app store uh, of uh, business applications that they surface through uh, a portal uh, served up through the Spotify web uh, player that uh, surfaces those uh, those apps uh, from the library into the business community that the that analytics group uh, services. Okay, so so basically, what you're suggesting is so these tools they do sort of provide the the capabilities uh, for someone to actually consolidate the knowledge and and sort of the insights uh, from the data and actually do this center of excellence uh, deployment with the, with these libraries. Um, and definitely, that's uh, that, that that's comforting to know. Um, yeah, so it's more, more than insights. It's also the the components of the analysis that gets you there that mm -hmm. can be repurposed and uh, you know around other uh, different problems. Okay, so now now uh, slightly about your journey uh, through this industry, right? So um, over over last uh, twenty thirty years since since you are sort of uh, with this industry. What has like what has been sort of your experience as uh, as the, this industry is, is evolved? So where it is coming from, and then probably where it's heading to. If if like I can have some perspective on sort of on that and how the industry has been adopting these capabilities, and and sort of are there any insights in uh, in from what you are seeing from your from your side? Uh, yeah, so I'm pretty old guys. So I've been around a long time. Um, but you know, when I first started, there was basically there was SAS as the language for, for analyzing data. And I went to NC State, as you noted, for my PhD in statistics, and I got a pretty thorough uh, dousing in SAS, uh, as you know, that the stat department at NC State was the home of SAS. Oh, nice. Um, but, but then along came S. Uh, so when I was working on my dissertation, the S language was uh, created at Bell Labs, and we were fortunate enough to be one of the seven or so universities that got a drop of the S language. And so when I got my hands on that, uh, you know, bye bye SAS, uh, <laughs> because it was just so easy and so flexible, and you know, my dissertation was all about simulating from models, and I, you know, with with the S language, you just have your fingers on the data. It's a, kind of an amazing experience. So, so that you know, that whole um, my dissertation was really a combination of S uh, running inside of Emacs with LaTeX that I used to write the dissertation. But that's the world that you know, on a Spark, uh, on a Sun uh, workstation. Um, when I first got there at the university. There was the you had to submit a job to the Triangle University Computing Center through an IBM JCL command running Fortran or SAS, uh, and then the, the department got a, uh, a VAX 780, and then we got a network of Sun uh, workstations. And so, you know, my my thing growing up was really the Sun workstation with uh, with S, uh, Emacs, LaTeX, that kind of stuff. Uh, and as we, you know, as that kind of grew up um, across uh, the world, that whole experience sort of transitioned and as you know, things have become a lot uh, faster and, 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 and at scale, um, and we're seeing the emergence then of, uh, of visual, you know, analytic platforms like Spotfire uh, really become central to this. 
um, experience, and then R took over um, in terms of the lingua franca of the stack community. Uh, you know, Python's had a had a surge, um, uh, and then you know the whole range of visual analytic tools and data um, preparation type tools. Uh, you know, is now kind of driving uh, this this space. Uh, but I think it's really important to uh, you know take the best of all these things, mm. um, and you know what we've tried to do in in Spotfire and, and and why the people who really do use Spotfire are so devoted to it is we bring all the pieces together, right? So you've got uh, Spotfire as the kind of the user experience, but you've got right at your fingertips your data functions in R. Uh, you've got uh, right at your fingertips the ability to do geocoding. Uh, you know, to, to bring together visual analytics with algorithmic uh, analytics uh, and, and create an application. Now, just to wrap up, though, you, you made a point about things going more uh, faster and more real time. Uh, so, you know, as as that analysis gets created, the ability to action that and put that out into data that's flowing through it and create an action or notification, uh, that kind of thing is has really taken off in the last couple of years. Okay, no, I think that's an interesting point. So um, now let's talk about a small to medium businesses who are pretty much on the fence of being data driven. So it, it like as a human, it's our intuitive capability to sort of decide things on a gut feel based uh, mechanism. Now we are going towards a data driven uh, ecosystem and sort of we have a lot of sophisticated tools, but primarily it's still, it's still sort of the capability for lords and the kings uh, in the ecosystem. So now for someone, um, although although the tools are accessible by everyone and they are open source players, there are a lot of sort of things. So what do you, like from your perspective, what do you think uh, is an opportunity for someone who's pretty much on the fence uh, of being data driven and, and sort of adopting these capabilities on board or what should they do um, as, as a starting first five or six steps uh, to go from gut based uh, random decision maker to uh, somewhat uh, like I inviting some data-driven decisions into the ecosystem. Well, you know, I, I think just getting some sort of visual analytics um, system in place to start looking at the data. Um, you know, it's just amazing what what you can see just by taking a look at your data visually. Uh, you know, we call it you know spot the fire, finding the uh, the interesting parts of the data uh, and getting there visually is uh, it's real eye really eye-opening. You know, to find these um, insights in the data, so I think that's the way to start. And there's, you know, I've been talking about Spotfire. Obviously, that's our product, but there's a number of products there that uh, allow you to very quickly get your data into a visual experience. So that's the way to start. And then, uh, uh, but I think, you know, in, in hand in hand with that is, you know, how am I driving my business? What is the business problem? How do I get more customers? How do I keep the customers I have? Uh, how do I uh, you know, engage with them, or how do I manage my assets, or you know, what is the what is the business uh, problem that's core to growing your business, and uh, how do I you know how do I do that? If you're in a um, uh, say a retailing or a franchising situation, where do I put my next store? Um, so why don't you do that in a data driven way? It's not you shouldn't just make a random choice there based on where other stores are, right? It's like find out. Where you know, with analytics, find out what the best place to put your put your next store as you're trying to grow your business. So every time you get to making a you know a crucial business decision on growing your business, think about doing that in a data driven way and actually look at data to do it. You know, try and take it away from your just gut. Um, you know, your gut's important, um, but you know, try and try and make it um, a data driven decision as you as you go down that path of growing the business. So who do you think, um, like uh, as a follow up on that, so who do you think would be the first initial few hires? So if suppose I have no clue uh, what what really this industry means, I, I have no clue. Sure, I have heard in a lot of conversation there's something called big data um, and many ways I don't even know what big data means. So what should be my starting steps uh, going forward? Like so definitely I'm, I'm getting anxious on this industry. I, I, I'm, I'm anxious of being being lost out. Uh, in this ecosystem, so what I like three or four steps that I can I can take from start to somewhere. Uh, what do you think? Right. Yeah, so you need to find somebody who can you know, wrestle the data, someone who's got some SQL experience, uh, someone who can you know organize the data into uh, you know, some 
repositories, data stores, someone who's fluent with some basic uh, technology, you know, maybe someone who can set up a, a SQL Server database or you know, something that allows you to have a refresh of data into, you know, into your business and in a way that you can reuse it. Um, so if you're in customer facing business then managing your customer data, you're setting up a customer 360 um, view of, of your customers uh, that you want to manage and, and grow your relationship with or acquire new customers. So in terms of growing a business, customer facing, the customer uh, relationship database is, is uh, you know, hugely important. If you've got uh, you know, assets, then managing those in a, in, a, in a database and putting a visual analytics tool on top of that. So you just need to hire somebody who's quantitative, um, has good IT skills, good SQL skills, uh, and good visual analytics skills. You know, with a basic visual tool, again referring to Spotfire, and a basic database, like a SQL Server database, so, you can do a lot. I think that's a, that's again a very good point. And I think one of the thing that we hear a lot about is the leadership sort of being on the fence in adopting these. Skills. So, uh, like uh, we talked, a lot of smart people who actually can execute that, but their leadership are not uh, in tune with sort of using these and adopting these capabilities. So what would sort of uh, you say is the best way to convince or sell to a leader this idea of being data driven if they are sort of on the fence of, uh, hey, I, I'm, I'm happy sort of deciding it for you. Why do you need data? Uh, from, so how do you like what's the best uh, argument that they can have to convince the leaders? Yeah, so the best argument is like what is the key problem that's facing the business in terms of growing the business? Get some data on that problem by hook or by crook. Just scrape it, get it wherever you can. And find something interesting in that data and insight that can, you know, drive a business decision that, that grows the business. Uh, you know, to a business leader, there's nothing better than someone showing them, "Hey, look, here's what's going on right now. Here's what we think based on the data that you should do next to, to you know, take a quantitatively driven business decision." So, you know, we go into sometimes we go into these big companies that've got data everywhere, but they, you know, there's almost too much data, but not enough insight. Right, so uh, yeah. and just just getting hands on a piece of data and finding an insight, and then shopping that around to, you know, your business partners can be you know hugely influential. I think that's that's a very very well said. Uh, having sort of a small success and then and the scaling on that, I think that's very critical. I think that's very rightly said, and and, and do it uh, admire you, admire you for that. So now let's go somewhat about uh, this guy called a data scientist or data analyst. So growing field and sort of every now and then we hear about someone uh, jumping out of the web wagon saying hey um i i have been working with sql for quite some time and i want to be data scientist or hey i've been sort of uh, out of a business school and i think i can be a data scientist or whatever so what is uh, what is sort of uh, data scientist to you i think we briefly touched in, in the start of this conversation but if suppose I am, uh, I have some data experience. I've been playing along. Uh, what is my shortest route to actually data scientist? Uh, if 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 I can have some perspective on that. Yeah, sure. Uh, we we often hire people straight out of college, uh, and I look for people who are just hungry to learn and get their hands on data. Uh, you can learn a lot of the skills needed, but you know, provided you've had a bit of quantitative training, a little background in. You've got coming out with a computer science degree or a math degree. You've had some exposure to quantitative methods, and some hunger to understand um, how to analyze data. Uh, you know, those are the main things. I mean, you've got to know a little SQL. You've got, you know, if you know a little R or you know a little SQL, you can pick up Spotfire. It's amazing what you can do just knowing those three things, and having curiosity around the APIs and extending, uh, you know, those products to create something cool. Um, that's visually cool or analytically cool and integrates things together and helps you take an action quickly. Uh, you know, that's that's the sort of skills we look for. Interesting. Uh, definitely a good perspective there. So if, if I can ask about a typical day in your life, like what what what, what is that? Oh, wow. A uh, typical day in my life. Uh, usually I speak to customers. Um, Typically on a daily basis, I speak to the data science team, understand what everyone's working on. Um, you know, if there's product things come up, I speak to the product managers. Uh, you know, it's it's a real blend of uh, all the things that I've been talking about during this interview. Uh, they pop up. Um, 
there's lots of you know customers we work with have a lot of really interesting business problems, and so uh, you know working with the data science team uh, to understand those is a is a really fun part of the job. Uh, but yeah, I mean that's kind of it. Uh, we, we the team, the data science team, uh, we're about uh, those guys uh, spend a chunk of their time working with customer data, customer problems, a chunk of their time building really cool applications based on our technology, and then a chunk of their time you know telling the rest of the world about those things they've built and collaborating with each other. Uh, nice. That's that's really a day in the life of the data science team at Tipco. Nice, nice. I, definitely, I, I do appreciate it and thank you so much for sharing that. Um, now, let's talk about a prediction. So, uh, I, I basically ask everyone I meet, uh, what do they predict uh, the next age of, uh, what's next coming in, in, in the world of analytics? So, what would you say? Sure, sure. Well, I think it's, it's really surfacing the smart stuff into um, regular people's hands. And so, getting, uh, I, I mentioned a few things uh, where we, uh, investing in recommendations, uh, so looking at the data and the software recommends what you should do with it. Uh, but getting more from just um, looking at data, uh, describing what's happened, into predicting what's going to happen next, and getting to an action about how you can optimize the the, the next sort of series of events and, and the course of action for the business. So going from descriptive to predictive to prescriptive uh, analysis is is a big trend and in incorporating smart stuff um, into that, uh, so suggesting the types of analyses you might want to do and, and so on. Uh, the other big area that uh, I see is um, as data are moving faster, how do you quickly do stuff with it that um, allows people to get notifications or to get prompts about what to do next or you know, recommendations, so you create an analysis um, on historical data uh, but then you put that to work on data that's continually flowing, so that uh, you you know you take advantage of this of the insights that you, you've uh, developed on looking at historical data, so that as new data are arriving, you're notifying people of people who need to know about it, or you're you know, sending an analysis to somebody who wanted to be tracking a particular issue, or you're making a recommendation to a customer through a software system. You know, Tipco we call this the fast data platform, where you take an insight from Spotfire and you deploy it into the real-time system. Uh, so as a, the next event occurs, the insight that you've created uh, is is used to suggest the next course of, of action, either in terms of managing a piece of equipment or getting uh, something in front of a customer or sending a notification to somebody to go talk to this person. There's something going on here. That type of action from the data. So you know the tagline for Spotfire is first to insight, first to action, and we think. That this action part is uh, is really a, a, a fairly new frontier. Uh, you know, we've been at, at this for a long time, but we, the world is really kind of catching up. And you know, everybody wants to check their notifications when they pick up their phone or find out you know what's going on. So as the world becomes faster, analytics uh, are are in, involved and embedded in that in that fast world that that we live in. No, I think that's the that's uh, that's that's what's happening now, and I think there's just going to be more and more of that type of thing going forward. No, awesome. I think thank you so much uh, for sharing that. And and, and definitely uh, thank you so much for your time. Very informative session. And I, th I think uh, I do appreciate your time sharing your insights and your sort of findings and what your, your work with TIPCO and where TIPCO is heading to and all that. So I do appreciate your time. And I, I would love to have you back on the show in a couple of months to sort of see the follow on and, and sort of where have you been and sort of learn more for, uh, and dig deeper into sort of where we're heading to. So thank you so, so, so much for your time, and um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, no worries. Thanks, Michelle. Um, let's, let's talk again soon. Awesome. Have a good one. Yeah, bye. Bye. Uh, I thought I was sick of home, but actually I was homesick. Never really knew that I would have to grow up so quick. I'm so uncomfortable, don't know anybody here. Just a couple dudes that I met once, that's it. That's it. And I go into the booth feeling nervous. Got butterflies in my stomach like I'm so worthless. Is the mic on? I don't know how to work this. Inside I'm breaking down, I hope I'm not up on the side.